and now we're up with a project that I came across about a month ago. Um, it's a documentary called 32, and it is a privilege to have its director, Lil Mo, here, and the recording artist and executive producer, Maul. How y'all doing? How you doing? What's going on? Glad to be here. Thanks all right, for having All right. Oh, it's, my pleasure. it's my pleasure. Now, I knew nothing about what went down in this documentary until you gave it to me. And when I sat and watched it, um, the, the, the coverage of it was, was powerful. It was powerful and it pulled no punches, but it wasn't trying to throw anybody in the eye. Um, Lil Mo, how did this whole project come to be and how did you come behind the helm of it? Well, me and my boy, man, uh, Jamal, a.k.a. Model Pimp, we, uh, we were just having a conversation one day, man, and uh, we decided that we wanted to make a, a documentary about this topic. You know what I mean? And, uh, Maul, he 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 been to school for this stuff, and you know what I'm saying he had a he had a real good plan and a strategy, and I believed in it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, um, I said I'm, I think this could be a pretty good project, man, a big project, and we just put our all into it, you know. So that's what we did. You know, it took it took like three years to put together, man. Because what year did this happen? 2013. 2013. In November 2013. Yeah. Now, so the audience knows it from beginning to end. Give me, give me that, give me how this whole thing started and went down. Uh, but basically basic story it was uh, the uh, first was God. We were going to go into the beginning and made us put this together. Back in 2008 or 2009, Hamilton County Sheriff Billy Long was arrested. He was caught with multiple kilograms of cocaine, multiple pounds of marijuana, providing firearms to known felons and things like that. He served eight years on a 16 year sentence, which is a blessing, depending on what you got. If you get caught with all that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So fast forward, this, this guy gets picked up. He's charged and then sent away to do his time. Four years later, they, they indict these guys right here. You know, these guys were, none of these guys were caught with any drugs. They were all alleged to been talking on the phone about stuff. So they may or may have not say whatever they were accused of. But the things that they were accused of saying was a lot less than what he got caught in person with. Right. So it kind of just, you know, baffled me that they would get triple the time that he got. You know, if, if he's bringing in this much drugs and they're accused of talking about this much, where are they getting it from? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, the guys who, who were the guy who's supplying these men, you lock them up and give them a slap on the wrist. The guys who get caught with or without it, you know, you, you send them away for the, almost for life. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of bothered me. That first and foremost, damn, when we said on the news that these guys are the worst of the worst and stuff like that, the way they were just profiled on the news. I know, I know a lot of these guys personally. I grew up with a lot of them. A lot of my just knew from the city, so I know these guys. A lot of them, I know their moms. You know what I'm saying? I know their kids, their wife. So I know these guys. So I know what I'm seeing on the news is not true. Right. And then to see the worst of the worst being profiled on the news, to me, that was defamation of character. And then if you're trying to, if you're, if you're really trying to clean drugs up off the street, we'll fought that. But how do you just only get all black men for that? Every race does drugs. Yes. Every race across the board does drugs. So when you only get all black men in the drug round up, it makes us think they're racial profile. And right. the thing about it, Clint, the thing about it is, if the sheriff is getting caught with 30 kilos, and these young men are the worst of the worst in the community, and they're getting caught with ounces, okay, kilos, ounces. Right. Where they, where they getting the ounces from? Right. Mm -hmm. And when How I was, it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And when I was watching the documentary, they, 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 they arrested 32 gentlemen, 32 African Americans of varying ages. Some of them didn't even have rap sheets. Right. Some of them right. Had, had, they didn't have a speeding ticket. Right. Didn't have worst of the worst. Right. Exactly. And that's what they were called on the front page of the Chattanooga News. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and, and so then I was reading the part, and you might have to remind me of the name of the, the gentleman who was who was talking to his buddy about getting Zaxby's chicken, and they heard that phone call and said yeah, that terrible. that Zaxby chicken meant a kilo of cocaine, that and guy, he's doing what ten yeah, years? Yeah, that guy was my road manager in this music. Okay, that well, guy was my road manager. You know, before he got picked up in this situation, if you want to call me for an interview or call me for a show, you would go through him for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Half the time that these guys run the investigation, he was on the road with me. We was on flights flying out of town. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they tied him to this investigation out here because of some people who <clears throat> who he knew. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And they, they didn't have anything on him. So, yeah. his, his deal was, okay, we, we want this guy right here. We know that you're cool with this guy. So, if you're not going to give us what we need to know, we're going to take this conversation. When y'all was talking about taking your wife out to eat Zaxby's, we're going to turn it into drugs. Unless you cooperate. Right. And since you didn't cooperate, that's what he got. And that was the whole part of it, was what you just touched on, is that they were going to give him a much lighter sentence if he snitched. Right. But he wasn't snitched. And so, they piled up on him with two, now, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but he had, they took two 
Burglary charges? Two robbery charges. Two robbery charges. Two old old ones, like 10, 10, 10 years before, right? right? On two right. different occasions, yep. and they right. bundled those things illegally. Right. Correct? Right. right. Exactly. Right. And then they had his his wife was on the documentary, correct? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, yeah. what we want to do, Clint, is we want to we just want to raise awareness on the on the situation, man. This is something that we've really been going through for years and years on years. Mm -hmm. And the, the opportunity just presented itself for us to to do to say something about it. You, to to where you can't even get mad at us for saying nothing about it. It's like a slap in the face, man. You know what I mean? Like, so you got to understand <clears throat> when they made the when they made no. Before we get going, no disrespect to you, uh, any other uh, white man or any other thing like that. Just speaking from a black man perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, when they made the Bill of Rights, when they made the Constitution of Independence, when they made all these laws in America, one none of my people in the room. One no women in the room. It was white men in the room. Right. And for years, these men just been abusing their power. And the times have changed. Things have changed. You see what I'm saying? Things have changed. We have to change. We can't be going out the same rules we was going around when they had musket guns. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. man. We still <laughs> going out the same rules yeah. when they were challenging each other to a duel. And what you, you, know what and you brought up about the, um, <laughs> it's a federal case. This whole drug thing was up. They call it a federal case. And it's like a double... A double smack in the face that they're trying to make, make it sound like Chattanooga is the hub of all this violence and drugs, right, right. and it's not. And then out of that, the second slap comes when it's, like I said, 32 gentlemen, all African American, and then you know, with with none of them had major charges on, did they? they did. No, no. Yeah, they, you know, you had a few that had some charges back in the day, but we spot we talking in general. Right, these right. These are not the worst of the worst. And then we go a step further. These are the worst of the worst who causing all this crime and selling all these drugs. And these guys have been gone since 2013. Mm -hmm. It's 2019. We still got a lot of murder in the city. We still got a lot of drugs in the city. So who's doing that? Mm -hmm. And these guys are gone. It's so how, how did you really help uh, take them off the street? Because you didn't stop anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You didn't stop nothing. And that's, that's a specific point you addressed in your song. What? Yeah. About, yeah, yeah. It is, and then... I sure as did. Because I'm glad yeah, you, you listened. Yeah, yeah I, did, I told you. I was, when I saw you in the parking lot, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a fan, but when, when, when you went to okay, I was like, I know you, I know you. Right. right. And, it, 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 you know, it's, and with it being 2019, another detail I picked up was that, that Sheriff's getting out this year. No, he's been out. Oh, he has? Oh, yeah, that was the first... It was reduced. Okay, I thought... Yeah, yeah, he's been out two or three years, which is another slap in the... Like, you know... He did eight years. I mean, he was sentenced to 16. He did eight years. Mm -hmm. Now, if some of these guys would have been caught with multiple mm -hmm. kilograms, mm -hmm. matter of fact, a half a kilogram, over, been a triple life sentence, no mm -hmm. parole. Mm -hmm. They get caught over. with 32 or 33 kilograms. That's mm -hmm. cartel type stuff right there. Yeah, that stuff you ship across the border right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, so if I'm the sheriff and I get caught with all this, I take I take 10 years happily. That's a blessing right there. Right, what it should have been. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you fast forward to these guys, the worst of the worst, who are on the phone allegedly talking about stuff. Allegedly, yeah, ten to twenty years, mm -hmm. caught with nothing, right. phone call, you know and, and the phone calls y'all have on the documentary too. So I mean, the, that's what I love about the documentary is that it, it leaves no guesswork. Right. You know, like, I wonder if that's true. No, you have it, it, the whole thing is set up from the making of your video and to the the evidence given in the case to the you know the sheriff and, and it wasn't just drugs, but uh, he provided a, a gun to a felon a and they got that on camera. Yeah. So like, and the drugs too, and the money, okay. and the money laundering. Okay. Yeah, man. On camera, right? Yeah. Hey, can't get mad at Mild Pump and Lil Mo Films, man. It mm -hmm. was just, it's public information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, something, it's something that needs to be put out there. You know, I don't, I don't honestly think it's going to stop, but uh, maybe if we bring a lot of awareness to it, you know, the next time when they decide to do something like this, it will be done with a lot more precaution and a lot more fairness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, because this this type of stuff, this is ridiculous, man. Yeah. It's ridiculous, you know. Uh, and y'all face some more just unfairness during the production. When I, you know, I, when I watched the documentary, I saw that. There's a part where y'all filmed the video and, and the police rolled up and was videoing y'all. saw that? True yeah. Story. Yeah. True yeah. story. Yeah. And the only reason they didn't jump out and harass us was because the camera was video on there. Video camera. Mm -hmm. The camera was yeah. on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because y'all was watching on the video on the, on the camera and then you had the camera behind you. On there. Right on you him. know what I'm saying? So yeah. if anything unjust would have been happened, would have been caught on camera. But if we had had any cameras rolling, mm -hmm. or we would have, say, made a sudden, like, sudden abrupt move as if we were doing something, like, let's get out of here. Like, but we know we weren't doing them alone. Mm -hmm. A thousand people walk up down Martin Luther King all day. Mm -hmm. Why you come stopping us? And I mean, it's the the, the artwork and, and the, the the how Chattanooga's being refurbished. The artwork on the buildings is amazing. And you catch that Martin Luther King and, and the mural there with him. It's just that the the in the in the ugliness of the event and what was done to these thirty two gentlemen and more that we that's not on the video. It's, it's going on right now. Y'all still captured the the beauty and the rejuvenation of Chattanooga. Right, right, and it's just it's these subtleties. You know what I'm saying? It's, and I know they were intentional. You know, or they wouldn't have been in the camera in the video. I mean, that, that's the the. The deliberateness of this is 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 what is. I never watched it and thought, uh, this is this is these are some newbies getting in the game. I mean, this whole production from 
for the song and then the the it wasn't a cross production like I'm doing the song and we'd be in the video. It's a we did this. And this right. is the song of how it went down. This right. is the gospel hymn of how this thing came together. See. And this is the truth step by step by step. And it left no room to say but or what if. You know, right. it, it's, right. it's 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 like you did, it's, it's almost like you wrote your own legal brief in the song and documentary. That's the way it came across to me. Nice. Yeah. The song was supposed to, the song was more like a it was like a soundtrack to the documentary. That's why we wanted to use the video to play it at the end. Once you watch the whole documentary, you're going to get yeah, listen to the word. On. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Mom, mom. Look at the video, and then you get a, now the video makes perfect sense when you're looking at it because you've already watched the documentary. Mm -hmm. That's why it shouldn't be the That's why we didn't want the video in the front of the documentary and the middle. We wanted it at the end once you've seen everything. Mm -hmm. That way the, the words and the lyrics and the footage that you see make sense. It's like a soundtrack. Yeah. Mom, tell, mom, tell us about the song. Tell us about the lyrics, how you put it together. Uh, your, your inspirational process, how you get that fired out from uh, I, I started writing the lyrics. Uh, I wrote the lyrics before I even had a, a beat to go with it. I wrote the lyrics. Uh, actually, I came up with the hook first. They call them 32. The, just what I saw on the news, they call them 32, the worst of the worst, or what's the worst is how their families were hurt. Mm -hmm. The shell gave them that work. Mm -hmm. Still drugs in the city, that's real, but they in jail, so you ain't getting it from them. That means it's bigger than them. Mm -hmm. True story. I wrote the hook based off of that. When I wrote mm -hmm. the hook, then I think I started writing the verses after the hook. I still never had a track for them. I, yeah. I just wrote the verse and wrote the hook, and uh, and then my homeboy, Hush Shakara, out of North Carolina, uh, he sent me a beat for it. He sent me actually about 10 different beats, and I think when I skipped through the beats, and I got to like beat number six, I said, this the one right here. Yeah, man. This the one right here. Recorded the song. Uh, once I recorded the song, I just kind of put it up. But I knew when I did the video, I didn't want to do a regular video. I knew I wanted to shoot a video with nobody in it, just me solo. I wanted to include footage from the news in order to paint the picture a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I don't want nobody in the video. Just a solo, just me solo. I, you know, it's just me, all solo shots. Yeah. And the only time you're not looking at me is when you're looking at footage mm -hmm. from the news. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I think that painted the picture right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the, the story being told, and when they would zoom back on you, it was always like the punctuation mark. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, is that, am I getting that right? I mean, I, I'm not trying to force no, my. Okay. No, that's right. No, that's right. You got it right. You got it right. Yeah. yeah. And that's the perfect picture I wanted to paint right there. It's the perfect yeah. picture. Yeah, the perfect picture. So I think the video speaks volumes because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And then you're seeing it as you're hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's visual and it's, and it's audio at the same time. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, we have Alan Shropshire here, too. He thought he was going to get away from the mic, but he is not. <laughs> How you doing, boss? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Now, the reason it's easy to segue from 32 and, into what you're doing, the community bail fund, um, is that, uh, and I've had some, some personal experience with friends in, in my own life that, some people get inside, they get arrested, and they don't have any family or friend on the outside to, to do anything for them to get them out. Is you know, how did all those factors, or any of them, how did all, how did you build this up from the ground? <laughs> oh, well, personally, I can say from personal experiences myself, uh, my past, but uh, I was connected with a lot of different organizations. Um, the organization that helped create the um, community bail fund is Cable, so it's telling it was in action with uh, love, equality, and benevolence. So it's an organization within organizations. So we have uh, at least eight to nine different different organizations that come together for one cause. And this cause right here has been one of the ones. So uh, criminal reform, you know, and injustice in our system. And, uh, you know, with me being a person knowing that there's people in our communities that cannot afford to be able to bail out, um, that's our goal. So, you know, I'm glad we're on here today. I can say that uh, good news that uh, everything has been officially stamped. So our goal is before the months out, we'll, we'll be getting somebody out. So. Now, now, you know, if people need to get a hold of you and, get, and know more about this project, where do they need to go? Um, well, definitely, uh, you can either reach me on, um, at my email, uh, alan at greenspaceschunnelable.com, or you can reach out to us on our Facebook page. You can check us out at Caleb um, on Facebook, Caleb on Facebook.com. Um, it'll be yeah, it'll be Caleb. You can reach us on there. Um, but definitely, um, we will have upcoming events coming up in either March and in April. We will have a uh, issues convention, and um, these guys that we're talking to with Mo and Mar uh, a little more films, and we have Mal. These two guys will be at our next bail fund um, event too. So we're just trying to tie all that in because they have a good topic what they're talking about and it just ties right into the injustice that we're speaking on. Right on, right on. Now Lomo, where can people find your documentary and get their hands on it? Where do they buy it? Hey man, you can go to um, www.32documentary www.32dvd.com All right, all right. And Ma, where can we find your CD? Uh, same, well, let me say this: the documentary, like you just said, the, uh, the, the, uh, as far as locally here in the in the city, you can go to the Fast Stop Gas Station on Wilcox Boulevard, twenty two eighty five Wilcox Boulevard. The thirty two documentary sitting right in there, 
behind the shelf. Walk in, you can't miss it. You can see the posters on the wall to let you know that it's still there. And then again, the website, 32documentarydvd.com, if you want to order offline for those people who like to use credit cards and know about physical copies like that. You can order, uh, have a uh, physical copy sent to you, or you can uh, uh, order and stream it. Watch it on your computer, either or. So we're covering all aspects, no yes. excuse. Yes. No yeah. excuse. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> stream it, get it mailed to you, or go in the store and get it, however you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all go subscribe to their YouTube, Lil Mo Films. Catch me on Facebook, Lil Mo Films, Instagram, Lil Mo Films, Google, everything. <laughs> Lil Mo Films. Lil Mo Films. Same yeah. here. Yeah. Instagram.com, at Mall the Pimp. Twitter.com, at Mall the Pimp. Facebook.com, Mall the Pimp, aka MTP. Subscribe to Pimpaholic TV on YouTube. Mm. Holler back. Well, with my, uh, my Facebook is my government, Alan Vista Swapshire. Um, or it's my Instagram, and it would be ALSM4600. Um, you can reach out to me anytime, ask any more information about the community better folks. All right. Gentlemen, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you all on. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate, appreciate, you. appreciate the platform, definitely. Okay. Appreciate that, man. Mm -hmm. It's all mine, y'all. And, and Mo, we're going to end this segment with you announcing your song. Let's hear about it. Yeah, y'all check this out right here. This is the hot new single right here. The soundtrack for the most controversial documentary in the city. 32. Holler back, check it out, real spit. <laughs>